1962, the US Navy had a submarine problem. Unknown threats under the sea that had become nuclear. The solution? The creation of a jet aircraft that could track and attack these iron beasts. An impossibly tall order. This future plane needed to be able to find the submarines fast, track them over the ocean, and believe it or not, needed to be able to hunt submarines in their own environment, underwater. Hold your breath because we're about to dive deep to explore the never-built Convair submerging seaplane. Since World War II, submarine defense had become a unique staple of wartime efforts. Nazi U-boats had hunted Allied convoys over the Atlantic Ocean, and with development of submarine-launched nuclear cruise missiles, these submarines now posed a grave threat to land-based cities. While submarine hunting boats had been effective, the age of jet engines provided additional opportunities that had yet to be explored. Perhaps a plane with its ability to fly over vast areas of ocean would be the ideal submarine hunter killer. To tackle this deep water problem, the US Navy commissioned four different studies into the idea of a submarine attack plane, with the winner to receive a grant of 36000 for future study, nearly half a million dollars today. Let's have a look at the four designs that they came up with. The first design was a vertical takeoff and landing plane, or VTOL, that could submerge beneath the waves with jet engines that would pop out of each side. It was designed to be hydrodynamic, able to cruise like a torpedo, and had cute little portholes to look out the front. We can see, however, that it wouldn't have been very aerodynamic, and this design wouldn't have facilitated a very heavy payload. The second design was very different. It was a ram wing concept that had collapsible wings when it entered the water to reduce drag. It would also reduce its air intake whilst in flight and be able to deploy torpedoes out of the front of the plane whilst in the water. The third concept was actually two in one, a VTOL plane with a mini submarine. The VTOL aircraft had a pretty conventional design with the submarine attached below like a typical payload. Upon coming to a rest above the surface of the ocean, the mini submarine would be deployed downwards with the crew waving goodbye. Interestingly, the concept also mentions that different mini submarines could be designed for different missions and environments, although we imagine the torpedo payload to be much smaller. But it's this fourth design that is the most interesting and would be the only one to make it past the initial concept stage. The fourth design's true name was the Convair and General Electric High Density Seaplane. High density because it would be able to go under the water itself. The plane would be 50 and a half feet long, or 15.39 meters, and have a wingspan of 39 feet, or 11.88 meters. The plane would have three turbojet engines that would be waterproof and have the ability to seal when underwater. It would have a retractable hydroski that it would deploy for takeoffs and landings on the surface of the water, and it would have a little propeller on the underside of the tail that would allow it to move underwater. When it comes to range, we need to clarify the difference between flying and traveling under the sea. It had a range of 300 to 500 nautical miles whilst in the air, or around 926 kilometers, and a much shorter range of only 50 miles underwater, or just shy of 100 kilometers. For speed, it was capable of 225 knots, or 258 miles per hour in cruise, or around 400. 17 kilometers per hour. So it's not as fast as a jet aircraft at all despite having three turbojet engines. Underwater, it would only be able to move at a speed of around 5 knots or 6 miles per hour or 9.26 kilometers per hour. 
which is actually slower than a normal person's ability to run. But before you think that this is the slowest submarine plane you have ever heard of, keep in mind that it could travel underwater for up to 10 hours before taking off and returning to base. This plane would accomplish this feat by having airtight engines, a closed off fuel tank and a crew compartment with an oxygen supply, with the rest of the plane flooding with water to go up to a depth of 75 feet or 22 meters below the surface of the ocean. The mission profile that was pitched by Convair went something a little bit like this. When a call went out that a submarine was near, the plane would deploy off a boat and travel to the location, rising only up to an altitude of 2,500 feet or 700 meters above sea level. This lack of height would make it quite susceptible to weather, however, it's not like it was afraid of getting wet. The plane would arrive at its location and land on the water using the hydro skis before diving below the waves. It would cruise underwater, deploying its payload up to 1,500 pounds or 450 kilograms before surfacing and flying home. Because of the weight of the weapon and the ability to stay submerged for long periods, this plane would have been the perfect ambush craft for enemy convoys, as well as the submarine hunting role. There isn't much mention beyond the specifics as to how this plane would find a submarine in the shallow depths of only 75 feet, but we admit that this was a revolutionary engineering challenge at the time. Convair would show the design publicly in 1975 and it was worked on for around about another six months in partnership with the Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics and the US Navy Bureau of Weapons. However, the project seems to have sunk here and not proceeded any further than some water tests. It's hard to say the exact reason why this project never really went ahead, but seemingly this plane design was a jack of all trades, but master of none. The plane wasn't a very good plane with poor range and terrible speed. It was also a terrible boat and submarine, unable to dive deep nor go very fast. Perhaps if the engineers had been given more time and funding, they would have been able to work out all the kinks. We don't know for sure. But I admit, the idea of a plane that can sink like a James Bond car and then take off like nothing happened is an incredibly fascinating idea. An idea that unfortunately was just not possible for the powers in charge back in the 1960s. Although you can totally imagine the look of the Russians' faces if they believed that this project was truly going ahead. But this wouldn't actually be the last time that Convair would consider a submersible aircraft design. They would additionally come up with a new design called the Convair Submersible Nuclear Ramjet. But that's a design that truly deserves its own video and will have to be the part two of this incredible flying submarine journey. So don't forget to subscribe to tune in and find out next time. This video would have not been possible without help from Aerospace Projects Review. This website has some fascinating never built projects and I highly recommend that you peruse the decades of research that are available on hand. In addition, I would love to thank my Patreons for supporting the channel so far and coming together yet again to help me produce this video. This video was certainly a challenge to make as material on this concept is very rare indeed, but it seems like the very first time that a submarine plane was properly considered outside of a science fiction novel. So thank you again so much for watching.